Okay, we're going to be looking at a one-dimensional calculus optimization problem about the longest stick that will get around the L-shaped corner of a hallway. Uh, in fact, maybe it's two hallways of different widths, maybe a 10 and a 5. So this problem was actually took a little while for me to wrap my brain around because the first model I, uh, first reasonable model I came to was actually correct, but took me a little while to figure out what was going on with it. But uh, okay. So here's how I thought about it, right? I basically said, okay, let's take, let's draw a line that's touching a stick, basically that's touching both walls and is making some angle theta with the horizontal. Uh, and in fact, both these angles here will be theta because it's a transverse line crossing two parallel, uh, two parallel lines. So I basically thought to myself, all right, well, you know, if maybe, you know, if maybe you have something that's, you know, a, <laughs> a stick that's structured like this, it's touching both ends and theta, you know, maybe you can like kind of pivot around and maybe it'll make it right. But I started thinking to myself, all right, well, when theta goes to an, when theta goes to zero, uh, when theta goes to zero, that basically is going to say that the stick becomes really, really, really long, right? It could be like a different stick. Um, but the stick that touches both hallways when theta is really small well it's going to become the stick will become longer and longer and longer because it'll just like go all the way down the hallway right and for the same reason when theta goes to 90 degrees um that stick will also become really really long because now it'll go uh down the south hallway right you can just kind of imagine that if theta was a perfectly uh if theta was a perfect right angle here then this line would basically just go down out to infinity the stick would go down to infinity so this presents a kind of strange thought process where at both limits with theta being zero and theta being 90, the length of the stick becomes infinite, which kind of suggests to us that there's some theta somewhere in the middle where the length of the stick will be a minimum. And that's where I kind of confused myself. It's like the problem is asking us to find the longest stick that'll fit. But here, this model will give us the shortest stick that touches uh, both hallways and the pivot point. And it took me a little while to wrap my head around this, but the length of the, or the minimum length of stick that touches those three points, right? Uh, those three points being the pivot point and a point on the wall and a point on the other wall, the minimum length of a stick that touches those three points is equal to the longest stick that will fit around the corner. And this is why the problem is a little bit uh, misleading, because it's not a maximization problem. It turns out that the way to think about it is actually a minimization problem. So to convince yourself that this equality is true, well, honestly, I don't think it's very, I don't think it's very clear. You kind of have to just like think, try to wrap your brain around it, right? But like, think about all the possible, uh, think about all the possible sticks that satisfy this criteria right here, right? Um, you should be able to convince yourself that pretty much none of them will actually fit around the corner, like all the super long ones, right? The super long one right here uh, with a really large theta or the super long one right here with a really small theta, right? Um, these sticks are much longer than this one over here, where there's a reasonable theta, so that if you try to make this thing round the corner, right, you're trying to, you know, you're, t you're coming in with this stick and you're trying to make it round the corner, when this theta, when this, you know, as you're sort of rotating this very, very long stick, um, once it starts to, you know, once that theta gets more mild, it's no longer going to fit, because, um, you know, as it approaches, <laughs> as it approaches this, you know, this theta, right? You can kind of see that this length, I, I, I'm not being very to scale here. You just kind of have to t try to follow the intuition, right? A at some point, so, so let's maybe call this one theta one. Let's call this one theta two. And let's call this theta three. At some point, theta three is going to have to sort of like theta is going to change from theta three and it's going to have to pass through theta one, right? But this stick is going to be way too long to fit, right? Because this is sort of the length of the stick that'll touch both walls. 
and the pivot point for theta one. So I guess what I'm trying to get at here is if you can just think about the length of the sticks, right? Pretty much every single, for all the possible thetas, every single stick that's not the shortest isn't going to fit around the corner because, because there's something shorter than it, right? Because there's a stick shorter than it for another theta. And as for that shortest stick, that shortest stick is the key. It can fit because, well, it's shorter than all the other sticks for all the other thetas, right? You can, it, it, this is really hard to draw. You kind of have to like visualize it in your head, but that's sort of the intuition behind, okay, so that shortest, that, that theta that produces the shortest uh, stick that satisfies the three point criteria, I hope that's reasonably convincing that that will get around the corner. And in fact, that must be the longest stick that, uh, that gets around the corner because anything longer than it must go through the same theta. Anything longer than it must go through the same theta, and if it's any longer than it, it'll bleed off into the wall and refuse to fit. So that's, hopefully that intuition kind of makes sense, right? The minimum length stick that touches the three points is the longest stick that will fit. And this is a much easier thing to calculate. Okay, I've labored on now long enough, but I hope that intuition makes sense uh, and guides us to what we're trying to find. But now to write down some actual math, right? So looking at this diagram right here, uh, let's call this just theta again. So L is going to be equal to, so we know that this uh, width is five and this width is 10. So the total length of this thing is gonna be like L1 plus L2, where L1, this is just basic trig, is equal to, um, or rather I guess, Excuse me, uh, I guess 10 is equal to L1 cosine theta, and 5 is going to be equal to L2 sine theta. So what you need to do is you need to take these two equations and rearrange them to come up with an expression for L. So I'll write that down here. So L as a function of theta is going to be equal to, um, I think it comes out to be, L1 plus L2, and that's going to be 10 over cosine plus 5 over sine. And so far, so good. So now the idea here is, all right, well, now you have your expression of L in terms of theta, and now you basically need to uh, take the derivative, which is, I'll let you do this yourself, right? It's not a super complicated derivative. Just make sure to follow your basic calculus rules. So I'm going to say that's blah, blah, blah. And in order to optimize, right, to find the minimum, or find the critical point, you gotta set that equal to zero. And then this equation, you gotta solve for the theta that, for the theta that uh, yields zero. Um, this is gonna require a little bit of ingenuity with trig, but I think this part, hopefully you should be able to um, play around with and figure out on your own. I do believe that some tangents will be involved at some point, but uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's have you take a crack and solve the rest of it for yourself. Because uh, I don't want to give everything away when I do these helpful videos, when I do these videos.